What's up guys, this is Jay and today I'm going to be teaching you how to adjust your contrast in DaVinci Resolve Lite. Um, I'm going to try and go as fast as I can because I don't like making long tutorials, people don't have patience for that. So let's go ahead and get started, uh, try to follow along, and if you have to just pause and rewind. Uh, so let's go ahead and load up our footage here, click on to edit, create a new timeline, create a new timeline, drag your footage to your timeline, whoops. Drag your footage into your timeline. Click on your color tab. And if you don't know how to uh, turn on your scopes, I'll show you how to do that right now. Go to your view. Go to your video scopes. Turn it on. I like to look at the parade, so go ahead and click this little three circles here. Click on parade if yours is in parade uh, already. All right, so the first method I'm going to teach you is just by using your primaries. This is probably the most common way people adjust um, contrast. This is probably how they get their contrast most of the time. So here we go. I'll show you. Usually what I'll do is just bring that down, bring your uh, shadows down. And if you don't know where that's at, it's in your primaries here. Bring your lift, your shadows down. Bring down your gain. And mess around with your gamma, gamma or mids. And that's pretty much it. Like, usually people create contrast using this. They would just crush the darks, bring up the whites, and voila, there's your contrast. That's one way I'm doing that. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the other ways that I know on how to adjust contrast. So let's go ahead and go back to the primaries. Let's set our, uh, let's set our exposure by just messing with your lift and your gain. I'm going to go ahead and crank this down a little bit to about 9 so it doesn't crush or blow out the highlights that much. Cool. And adjust the ga gamma so you can see his face a little bit. Okay, so there's the gamma. That looks good to me. So the second method that I'm going to be showing you is using your curves here. If you click on your curves, you can make this bigger by clicking on this arrow. Now. The first method is going to be with the gang custom curves. So this bottom left replicates the bottom portion of your image. The top right is obviously the top of the image. So if I click on this and just drag it down, you're going to start seeing that it's starting to crush the darker areas and I'm gonna click the top one and this is really famous in Photoshop and it's the same concept and I'm gonna go ahead and crank the high the, uh, the highlights up until it reaches uh, it reaches um, 1023 and that's just up to taste guys I mean it's really up to your image it's not like a number type thing and then you click the mid to adjust your mids make it brighter make it uh, darker um, but I'll just rem uh, just remember that whatever you move, whenever you're moving curves, it affects the image a lot. So make sure you make subtle, subtle changes. Okay, so this is another way that you can adjust contrast in DaVinci Resolve and like Photoshop and the other ones. Curves is really popular. But as you can see here, this right here has a lot of saturation. It added a lot of saturation in your image. I want you to take a look at that and just look how saturated that is. Now, I'm going to show you another way on how to do it in curves without adding that much saturation. I mean, there is no right or wrong answer in this. It's just a preference, really. So let's go ahead and reset your curves. Instead of having the gang custom curves turn on, let's go ahead and turn that off and just do the same exact S that you have or that you want to do. Let's go ahead, just really quick. Crank out the highlights until it looks good. Crush the darker areas and that's it right there okay so you can see it did it it gives you that contrast but at the same time it doesn't give you that saturation it's not a saturation it's not a saturated with the gang custom curves turned off okay so it like I said before there's no right and wrong answer on this it's just a matter of preference if you like this look cool if you like, if you like the other look then that's cool too but I'm just showing you on showing you different ways on how to adjust your contrast 
So let's go ahead and reset this one. And I'm going to show you the last one, okay? So let's go back to the color page. I already have my uh, exposure all set up, and it's good for me. Um, now I'm going to show you how to do the contrast here and the pivot. So if we increase the contrast, you're going to start seeing that our image here is stretching from up and down. It's just stretching, stretching, stretching. And you can see that it just adds that contrast in there. But now you can see that, look, oh man, that's just so, I'm losing a lot of details here. I wish I can control where that dark falls off or the highlights falls off, but you can actually control that. The pivot point right here is where, where it starts stretching your, con uh, your image. So right now it's set to 0 0.500. That means it's in the middle. It just stretches the middle. But if we decrease that to like 200 or so, you see what that does is it just gives you back those details because it doesn't start stretching until 200. And you can also just do it the other way. If you make it higher, you just want the stretch to start from the top. You can also do it like that. Or in the bottom, like that. So this way you can actually control your contrast a little bit more with this pivot button. So it, you know, it, it just, you don't have to just say, okay, yeah, that, that's good. I like that contrast. You can actually control it by just moving this um, pivot button up and down like that. And that's pretty much it. That's, that's all um, what I use when I add contrast to my image. And, Hope you guys learned something new, and if you have any questions, just let me know, and I'll try to answer them for you.